Hey, what up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Igloo of Cinema. In this episode, we're going to be reviewing the new Christopher Nolan movie, Interstellar, starring Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, and, of course, Michael Caine, because every Nolan movie needs Michael Caine. Okay, so this is the review for Interstellar. Like every review, we're going to take turns talking about what we liked and what we didn't like. So, yeah, let's go. Do you, Steven, do you want to start? All right. Uh, I'm, okay, I'll start with the acting. I thought the acting was really good. Um, just across the board um, from every actor. Like even the, the child actor who played uh, Matthew McConaughey's daughter. I thought, yeah, she, was, I thought, I thought, I thought she was really good, too. You, you know, she played, um, she played the daughter in uh, Breaking Dawn. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That. that, that I, I. I. knew I saw her from somewhere, and that was it. Oh. Sh okay. <laughs> and she's a great actor. I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. She was really good. Also, she. She really looks like Jessica Chastain as a kid. Like. Yeah. She really features. does. She really does. I agree. I agree. But uh, yeah. Um. The acting was great. I mean, Matthew McCon McConaughey really like took the role by. By the scruff of the shirt. Is that a saying? I don't know. He. He really took. He took control of the role and like. I don't know, you could feel all the emotion that his characters were feeling in every in every scene. You never you never felt like oh these are fake or anything like that. Uh, also, okay, the, the soundtrack I thought was good, really good. Um, Hans Zimmer again. Uh, he, I, I guess it's a thing now with Christopher Nolan where you only hire Hans Zimmer to do your soundtrack for your movies. But whatever. Okay. Um, I thought um, in some scenes where, especially when they were shooting in space, lots of the space scenes, the, the dramatic like establishing shots or they're, they're piloting through like an atmosphere or something, the music got really strong. You really felt like the intensity of the scene um, increased because of the music. Well, but, okay, is, um, yeah, I agree. I, I agree. I think it's really good and the, the music definitely was good. Especially since because, like Nolan told him to make the music before he even knew what the movie was about. Wait, I read about that. He's like, Hans was like, Christopher Nolan gave me this one sheet of paper explaining with, in one sense what the plot of the movie was. It's like, all right, go record for a day and I'll listen to what you got. Yeah. I, I thought that the music actually fit really well. I mean, yeah. Because, like, Nolan was saying how he didn't want to go for, like, an engineering sci fi soundtrack. So, not telling Hans Zimmer what the genre is of the movie yeah. before making the score was actually an uh, interesting idea. Yeah. He also focused on, like, making music for the father daughter relationship, which is pretty strong in this movie. Um, mm. There's a strong bond between Matthew McConaughey's character Cooper and 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 the and the both his kid as a kid and as Jessica Chastain. Even though they're technically never on screen together at the same time, they you can feel the the connection between the between the two characters. Okay. Anything? What about stuff you didn't like? Um, stuff I didn't like. Uh. Okay, so there's a character like Matt Damon plays, like who I didn't even know was in the movie, and he plays this scientist thing. I don't know. His I won't spoil the movie, but like his scenes are pretty contrived. Like mm. I felt like the portion of his story could have been cut out because the movie's really long. It's like almost three hours long, and I felt like they could have taken out Matt Damon's part. I mean, he's a good actor now. I mean, his parts were done really well. I just felt like they didn't add to the story in any way. So, um, yeah, speaking of the acting, it was really good, and, yeah, definitely the, uh, Matthew McConaughey's daughter in this movie, I didn't expect her acting to be that good, because from what I've seen of, like, child actors, sometimes they can be really terrible, so I'm really glad that she was really great, um, I think the space scenes looked pretty realistic, like, in terms of, like, obviously I've seen Gravity, so I kind of compared it to that. And I think it looks pretty good, as well as you talked about the music, and I, I feel like the mu the music was used very effectively because like during like the space scenes, there are certain points where the music there's like no music at all or like no sound, and I think that added to like the experience of watching the film because it felt like you were actually in space. You could feel how isolated they were, and it made me feel like, okay, I never want to go to space because I could never imagine it being completely quiet and just drive me nuts. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, stuff I didn't like is that this movie is pretty damn confusing. Like, we were talking about this earlier, how you have to assume a lot of things, like, 
when you watch it and like because this is like a time travel type thing like it gets really confusing and stuff so yeah okay um i okay so i actually really did like this movie i mean i is it is it Nolan's magnum opus? I don't think so. Although a lot of people are hyping it up to be that way. Um, so, and, okay, just like just the guy, Dark Knight is still your favorite, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Dark Knight is still my favorite Nolan movie. And I I actually thought Interstellar would beat that, but like I don't know. It's just I feel like I I respect Nolan for taking a chance and being creative and you know tr trying out such a trying out this movie with such a big scope and like. He he's very you know I, I like that he tried going for stuff like this. It, it's very interesting. Um, but I did like this movie. Um, like like all of you, I like the acting. I thought the acting was fantastic. Matthew McConaughey, holy shit! You know he definitely deserved that Oscar for uh, Dallas Buyers Club because he he's an excellent actor. Um, this guy has like crazy range. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. And Anne Hathaway, of course, brilliant actress. Um, Jessica Chastain. Brilliant as well, and I, I'm a <laughs> Michael Caine. Oh yeah, Michael Caine. Obviously, <laughs> Michael Caine. Um, but I thought, yes, I thought the 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 actress that played um, Murphy as a kid, I thought was amazing. Like one of the best crowd acting I've seen in a while. So yeah. I think on the acting front, Nolan definitely picked great actors for for, for this movie. Um, music, yeah, definitely great. Um, yeah, and I agree with Anna with the atmosphere. Like, there's stuff where there, there's no sound, and it really felt like you were in space. And, like, especially the, the stuff where they're traveling through the wormhole, I thought that was really great. Like, it, just, it was just amazing. I, and we didn't watch it in IMAX, but, like, if we did, I, I, I think it would have been incredible. Yeah. Um, and I also felt like there were a lot of emotional scenes in this in this movie that were very effective, especially, you know, and I don't think this is a spoiler or anything, but, like, you know, uh, no, um, McConaughey's character goes into space, and he goes into space for a long time, and then, you know, while he's in space, his kids grow up, and just, just seeing him watch his kids grow up and him not being there Boy, that was, was such a yeah. yeah. That was a, that wasn't a tough scene to do. I mean, like, just, like, Getting in the mindset that, oh, these are people I haven't seen in, like, 20-some-odd years or something like that. Exactly, and it was really effective. There's also this scene at the very end, which I'm not going to say anything, not going to spoil it, but very emotional scene there. And overall, I really liked it. I respect the fact that Nolan was trying new things. I respect that he, he's being so um, experimental. Well, okay, not experimental, but he's being very um, – I don't know what the word is. It's very um, – hmm. Oh, I, I can't think of the word, but I respect that he, he's going for, you know, movies that ha have a big risk. You know, yeah. you're dealing with space space and time travel at the same time and all the science-y stuff. You know, you read yeah, your you're, risk. You're dealing with a big community that has a, not a, lot, a, not a lot of knowledge about this stuff who really can easily pick out stuff. I mean, when Gravity came out, like, a bunch of, like, physicists or stuff were like, yeah, that's not possible. You can't do that. So, I'm, I'm, and in this movie, I think with, this, with the science – they were able to dumb it down to a level where it was easy enough for you to understand, but still to an extent where you needed uh, an educated, an educated kind of view on science to like fully grasp the entire ideas that they were talking about. Exactly, especially the fact that they're dealing with stuff like wormholes, which is yeah. like you know, it runs the risk of very you know the movie being really bad and. I respect that no one took that risk. No one always takes risks like that. Inception, Memento, you know, stuff like that. That normal, a lot of directors wouldn't even go near, you know, to try out. So I respect that. And I also like the movie. But, like, um, stuff I didn't like was, you know, with, with the, there is definitely a lot of talking in this movie. And I, okay, I agree. Okay, my favorite movie, The Dark Knight, has a lot of talking as well. But like, I felt like that movie the talking fit more. Like, it wasn't hammering you on the head with all, all this, like, hero stuff. You know, they, they were very careful with the way they handled that, that dialogue. Um, but for Interstellar, I just felt like the, the, they spent way too much time trying to emphasize the fact that Cooper's, like, this, you know, this guy who wants to be in space all the time, but he doesn't want to you know, abandon his kids. But, like, they're, they're always reminding that Cooper's a guy who's meant to be in space. 
Um, and the fact that, you know, they just keep, I don't know, like, sitting down and, like, talking for hours and hours. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I know you said the Dark Knight didn't have a lot of talking, but I felt like it's a, it's a Nolan kind of trope, or not a trope, but a style he has, where when he introduces themes, they talk, talk about they, it. They, they overtly really talk about the themes. And even the Dark Knight, they were like, oh, what does it mean to be a hero? Can I be the man without a mask? And this, it was like, it was like, um, does your selfishness override the, the well-being of others, or the the your the human needs um, need for companionship? Um, with obviously introducing Matt Damon's character, which I won't spoil, but that's kind of a big part of why he's introduced. Gets the hammer in the fact that oh, human beings need companions in this lonely world, and I just thought, yeah, I know. Okay, we we see the themes. You don't need to like like hit this over the head with it. Yeah, I agree, and and I do feel like yes, I do agree that this is like Nolan's style. But I, I did feel like for Interstellar, like it, he went a little bit too overboard with that. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, no, that's I'll true. Because I guess like I don't know, given the circumstance of the scenario of the film, you have to like. You have to talk a lot about yeah, like yeah, yeah explain I mean, a lot of stuff. There is space. There's not much you can do besides talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, not, I'm not I'm not talking about those scenes where they're in space and they're talking to each other. I'm, I just I just mean like. The, the stuff's before they're, they go into space, oh, mostly. Oh, no, yeah, no, I get you, I get you, yeah. Like, the, the stuff in space, I feel like the talking was great there. But, like, before space, I just felt like the, the, there was just too much of it. And, you know, e even being a part of a Nolan fan, like, I have faults, and that's one of them. Another one I did feel like, and I agree with Anna on this point, where you, you really have to suspend your disbelief a bit too much for Nolan movies. Even in stuff like Dark Knight Rises, where you're wondering how the fuck did Bruce get even get into Gotham City when it's all barricaded, like he doesn't explain that shit, and he just expects you to yeah, to no, just no let it go and. Just... No one's no one's also other style is like, like assuming assuming you should assume more stuff. We're <laughs> like we're like stuff has already happened in in the past that you should already be caught up with by the time the movie starts, and and it, it kind of, it's kind of a bit jarring because when the movie starts. It's not it's not present day Earth, but it's also not future Earth. It's like in between. It's a bit more in the future where they have technology, but it's not advanced enough to do what they want to do. So it's kind of a bit confusing as well. Like so, they can do that, but they can't do that. So you're kind of in in the in between space or liminal space between where where you think the timeline is. Yeah, um, I agree. I, yeah, um, and I, I do. You know, the, there, there's that, and also I feel like. Um, you know the the middle section of the movie was kind of a bit you know boring. No, okay, not boring, but like like the the fact is like the 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 beginning and the end of the movie felt like it was such a big movie. Like it, it's like it's it's like Nolan's playing around with these yeah, ideas, yeah, like these big ideas. But then in the middle of the movie, they're just you know not really. It turns into a generic space movie, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I felt like the pacing got a bit lost in the middle, or even yeah, the, it, it felt like a generic space well, movie. Like from the, from the beginning to near near the middle, the like the the pacing got a bit weird because um, the way they introduce plot points happens real fast in the beginning, and then by the time you get in space, it draws out. Yeah, it slows down. A lot, it slows yeah. down a lot, and like the the space stuff gets a bit uh, looked over. Not looked over, but you look over it a bit more as an audience member, where it's like space stuff, space stuff, space stuff, space stuff. You're like, well, how do I differentiate yeah. what's like, what's what? Yeah, true. And I also feel like the beginning and the end felt more Nolan-y than the middle. Like, the, the beginning, oh, yeah, okay, this is like a Nolan movie. He's setting yeah. up all these big ideas. And then in the middle of the movie, it's just guys in space. And it's just like a normal, you know, space movie where you can see where they're going with the movie. And then towards the end, that's when Nolan comes back and, you know, does all his usual Nolan stuff. There, you're like, oh, yes, this is why I love him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the middle, the pacing is a bit kind of, it's a bit kind of weird. And, you know, it just, it's, it's sort of boring. But, um... I think despite that though, like I think like at the end is where you're like, holy shit, because like so much happens near the end. You're, you're it's co sort of like overwhelming, but yeah, like, I agree. Yeah, but it, it kind of like hits you in the way that you're like, holy shit, like I didn't realize like mm. all this stuff like was like happening all this time, and then like it kind of blows your mind at the end. Well, it did for me, anyways. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but and I also agree with Steven with the Matt Damon character. I feel like that was a pretty waste. Like he, he you know, he, he they, no one could have got 
rid of that thing and he, the movie would have been still the same. Like, the middle act would have still been that generic kind of space movie. Um, and I'm not that I'm saying it's so generic that it's, you know, it, it's crappy, but, like, it's, you know, it could have been better. Yeah, yeah I felt like that, that the Matt Damon character was added in just to, I don't know, just to add, like, an extra subplot into the whole thing, whereas in, I guess if you took it out, you could have focused more like more than they already did on the main characters' stories and how their emotions were driving the story. Yeah, I can see that because it's like it's like he would, they were like forcing a villain, quote unquote, to be in the film. Hmm. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I do think like the 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 characters definitely like the Matthew McConaughey character C Cooper and his you know relationship with his with his daughter and son. I feel like that was more of a drive for the movie. Like the the story itself you know, has its problems, and, you know, if, if the characters weren't there, and if, like, his daughter relationship wasn't there, I think I would have, wouldn't have liked this movie as much, but because of the combination between, you know, respecting that he's playing around with these interesting ideas, plus the fact that there's all these characters, I think it's what makes this movie good for me. Like, yeah. if, if yeah, there's no characters, I think just the concepts alone would have you know, been too obvious. Like, the, like the, the concepts falling apart would have been too obvious. But because, like, the characters were there, it made the movie meld better. If yeah. You like, you mentioned the father-daughter relationship. I felt like that acts as, a, like, a, like, a figurative and kind of physical anchoring back to the, to the grounded world. Whereas, exactly. Like, yeah. I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. if you didn't have that, it'd be hard to believe or understand the, the, the plights of uh, Matthew McCona McConaughey's character, which is... What I realized now was the problem of gravity. Because Sandra Bullock's character in that movie, yes, the, the spectacle of the movie was very nice, but the the kind of backstory character she has wasn't very interesting. You never felt attached to her. But in this movie, you felt attached to McConaughey, and you wanted him to get back home. Exactly. And, and going back to the point where you said the characters anchor the movie, I, I totally agree with that. Because I feel like, you know, going back to Nolan's style, I really feel like Nolan's movies are always grounded in reality at, at some point. Like, like even Inception, you know, about dreams and going into people's dreams, I still felt like there was a very realistic connection despite that. And yeah. it's one of the reasons why I, I love The Dark Knight, because it, it's a superhero movie, but it's so realistic at the same time. Like, this guy could really be a bat. Yeah. And another reason is that's the problem I have with Dark Knight Rises. I really felt like Nolan... You know, I said that in my Dark Knight Rises review. I just felt like Nolan you know, was, was overstepping his boundaries a little bit and, and being a little bit too ridiculous, especially with, like, the bat and, like, the flying thing and, like, the bomb. <laughs> and, and I do agree, and I, I, and I do think because the characters are, are in Interstellar, like, it really grounds the movie in a more realistic kind of way because, like, a movie about space travel and, you know, and time travel can get a little bit too ridiculous, and I and when I heard that no one was going to tackle a movie like that, I was a bit worried because, like, he hasn't done stuff like this before, and it usually isn't his thing to 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 do like sci-fi and like you know wormholes and like these crazy things. Like he usually does more realistic kind of portrayals of of, of stories. Yeah. So I do agree that the characters really help with grounding the movie. Yeah. No, it's kind of like as if if, if you did it in like a mm, uh, physical sense or drew it out on a, on a map. You'd have all the stories surrounding, and through a thin line would be the character connection throughout the entire movie, where you you anchor the entire story to that and base everything around it. So then none of the like, like, like you're like, like yeah, and like at one point in the movie you're like um oh this wormhole thing that's oh, that's a little bit kind of ridiculous like all the space stuff, and then you oh yeah there's these characters and like I don't know it, it's really hard to explain, but yeah I totally agree with the yeah. the character in the movie. Um, so yeah, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Um, I don't think so. Just like um, the science stuff, you don't don't go into the movie thinking, oh, I won't get it. Just like sit back and let let the movie explain the science to you. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, so yeah, okay, let, let, let's end the review then. Um, uh, that's it for a review of Interstellar. Um, overall, I. Okay, let's give our overall, you know, thoughts on it. I, I guess I'll start. Um, I I really like. Okay, I, I yeah, I really like this movie. I, I, I acknowledge all the problems it has, but like, I the, the, all the emotional moments and the, the character, you know, the Cooper's relationship with his daughter, I feel like is what really drives the movie, and the fact that I I just respect Nolan for trying these things and risking 
you know, taking a lot of big risks and you know, just playing around with these ideas because a lot of directors, like I said before, you know, some some aren't willing to go touch that stuff and no one's really willing to. And you, you really feel like no one's just, just, just doing what he wants, like doing what he likes. Like he's making films that he would want to see and you can really see how much he enjoys making movies. And the fact that he, he's playing around with ideas with dreams and like inception and like, you know, memento and like, Interstellar. I just feel, feel like Nolan is really great with that stuff. So this, even though you know some of the stuff doesn't work, I can still respect Nolan for trying it out. So score. Score. <laughs> oh right. Okay. Score. Right. I forgot. So final score for Interstellar is an eight out of ten. Um, I, I really, you know, I'm not sure if I recommend. Mm, yeah, I do recommend this movie for most people, especially if you like Nolan films. Definitely go check it out. Uh, if you like space films, you can go check it out. You can really feel like a 2001 Space Odyssey influence in this movie. Um, but, but, yeah, but like Steven said, don't go into this movie, you know, really, you know, being all scientific and shit because, like, you, you, could just, you just end up not enjoying the movie as much. You just sit back and just take it for what it is, and it's a fun ride, in my opinion. So, yeah, 8 out of 10. Yeah, no, uh, uh, yeah, exactly what you said about Nolan. Like, his repertoire now is, like, so diverse with his movies. Um, is it my favorite Nolan movie? No. Is it the best Nolan movie, in my opinion? No. But it's still a good addition to the stuff that he's had. And the fact that this movie, like, yes, I, I said the themes are a bit overtly hammered in. But I, 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 like, the, I like the core of the story where it was talking about, like, just the human relationships and how extreme situations can bring about what you really feel and wh where it can go, depending on that. Um, so, yeah, overall, really good film. Uh, like I said, not not my favorite Nolan film, but it's still up there. Uh, so my score, jump jump the gun on me. I, I was gonna say eight out of ten too. So yeah, eight out of ten. Nice. Anna. Yeah. Um, overall, once again, I thought this movie was great. I really liked it, even though it was kind of confusing at parts, and you kind of have to like mull it over afterwards. But the ending and like the action, the suspense, the characters, just made this movie a lot of fun to watch, and I hate you guys, why you gotta do 8 out of 10, but I also give it an 8 out of 10. Alright, so that's not really that diverse of scores, but, okay, so, overall, final score for Interstellar, overall, across the board, is an 8 out of 10, um, great movie, you know, not amazing, like Steven has said, you know, not, you know, Nolan's magnum opus. And, I, you know, I don't even think Dark Knight is Nolan's magnum opus, but I definitely think Dark Knight is Nolan's best film. Um, but, yeah, overall, I totally recommend you guys to watch it. Um, you know, and if you hate Nolan, maybe you shouldn't watch it, because, like, you know, <laughs> the, themes, the, the themes that you probably hate about Nolan are, like, blown to a hundred times it, it, it's, you know, normal, normalcy in, in this movie. So, if you really despise Nolan, you not you're not gonna enjoy this movie that oh, professor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my my film professor for sure. Um, but but if you're just a casual watcher, you want to check out an interesting film, go check it out. If you Nolan fan, go check it out. And yeah, eight out of ten, good movie. So God yeah, damn it, you guys are watching. Yeah, what? God damn it, Matt Damon. I know, fucking. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even know he was in the movie. Like, <laughs> it comes out of nowhere. Um, okay, so anyways, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys watch Interstellar, please give your review down below. Do you like it? Dislike it? Why? Why not? Write in the comments. Um, also, do you agree or disagree with us? Do you think it's Nolan's best film, worst film? You know, every, any opinion about the movie, put in the comments down below. We love to read them as always. And yeah, that's it for this video. If you guys like this video, please like it. If you like it even more, please favorite it. Like it, like it even more, please share it. Subscribe to the channel for update content. Also, subscribe to our personal channels, other stuff stuff too. And yes, uh, I'll, we will see you guys on the next Black Couch, Igloo Cinema, or whatever. Peace. Boom.